Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Now, do you ever wonder how your body gets rid of diseases or protect you from any virus or bacteria? Now we're going to look at the topic. The lymphatic system will, will help you to understand how your body fights against diseases. Now, the lymphatic system is a part of the circulatory system and also the immune system which is responsible for nourishing and maintaining the health of the cells and tissues of the body. Now the parts of the lymphatic system, and I want this to be very, very clear at this point, so I want you to make note of what I'm going to say right now. The main parts of the lymphatic system include the lymph vessels, lymph nodes and the lymph very very important for you to note that they are the major part of the lymphatic system now the blood vessels um, is connected to the lymphatic system so it assists the lymphatic system all right and the and you also have tissue fluid that is associated with the cells okay so the blood vessels will assist the lymphatic system in carrying out the job and aided by the tissue fluid. Also, there are some accessory glands to the lymphatic system, which means they are connected to the lymphatic system and assist in carrying out the functions or the job of the lymphatic system. These glands include the tonsil, the spleen, and the thymus. Okay, so if you should list the parts of the lymphatic system, what you should list will be the lymph vessel, the lymph nodes, and the lymph. Those are the major parts. But the lymphatic system is connected to the blood vessels and aided by the tissue fluid. All right, so now you know, now you know and understand what is happening here. You will see all of this play out in a short while. Now, the functions of the lymphatic system, one is to remove toxin, waste, and unwanted materials. The lymphatic system also protects the body against diseases. And remember, we say it fight diseases. And even now, in the time of um, virus, exposure to virus, the lymphatic system is very important in helping us to be protected. And since it is connected to the blood vessels or the capillaries, it helps to supply the cells with nutrients. Now, this is where I wanted to pause because this here is not going to be very important for everything that's coming up next. So I want you to have a, a good understanding here. So make sure you list, pause, write down and take note of these three fluids. The three fluids that are associated with the lymphatic system, which are very important for the functioning of the lymphatic system, which is the blood, the tissue fluid, and the lymph itself. Now, the blood, which is a transporting fluid found in the body that takes substances to and away from cells. And if you notice what I'm doing here is kind of defining them as it relates to the lymphatic system and the function within the lymphatic system, all right? So I want to bear it in mind. Now, the blood contains blood cells, which are white blood cells, red blood cells, right? And platelets. Now, the blood also contains nutrients, and we're talking about like amino acids. We're talking about carbohydrates such as glucose. All right? It also will contain fatty acids and glycerol all right? and other nutrients that the cells will need for their functions. Inside of a blood, you'll find gases such as oxygen that cells need. You'll also find carbon dioxide that cells produce and need to be removed. You will also find plasma proteins or you may just say blood proteins. All right? The tissue fluid now, which is a fluid that surrounds the cells and maintain the osmotic relationship between the blood and the lymph. So, in other words, the tissue fluid is what is connecting the blood and the lymph. It is in between both and is very important in the functioning of what is happening in the blood and also the lymph. So, it is like the connection between both. And remember now, it surrounds the cells. Very important. 
the things that you may find inside of the tissue fluid will include nutrients such a, and it's similar to what is in the blood you will find gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide just the same and also some form of waste now it's very important for you to note that the tissue fluid does not contain any form of blood cells neither plasma protein the reason for that is because they are too large to pass through the walls of the capillaries so they will not be found inside of the tissue fluid all right the next fluid one look at here is the lymph very important fluid right here now and it is a colorless fluid that contain that contains white blood cells and it also removes waste from the cells so that's the functioning properties of the lymph it is white it is colorless and sometimes it could be a little bit whitish or colorless and it contains the white blood cells and it removes the waste from the cell now what you may find in the lymph in the lymph will be lymphocytes which are white blood cells so you could simply say white blood cells or lymph you will also find waste because remember it is removing waste and you may also find nutrients such as fatty acids and glycerols yes there are more substance present substances present but we are focusing on the main substances as it relates to the lymphatic system and the functioning of these fluids all right so next we're going to jump into now folks is some examples of the lymphatic system and i want to put on your guard right here because the lymphatic system can be drawn in many different ways or be presented in various forms so i have three samples that i'm going to show you and i want you to note that no matter how the system looks they are doing the same thing and you just want to make sure you highlight a certain um, things to make sure you have good and comprehensive understanding now look at this now carefully this is one of the simplest version that you may ever see all right simplest simplest version the three things you're looking at here you have the lymph vessel the capillary and the blood and the cells of the body all right now to point this out substances will leave from the artery or an artery into the capillary and this end we call it the arterial end or otherwise known as the arteriole and it will leave towards a vein so this portion in blue is going towards a vein and we call this end the venal or the venal end of the capillary okay so in other words now capillaries connect arteries to vein beautiful now what is happening here is that a substance flow under high pressure from the artery into the capillary they will diffuse across the membrane of the capillary or the walls of a capillary into the cells now the cells will use these substances such as the glucose for respiration and so on the amino acids to carry out assimilation or to make protein and then the waste products or the unwanted substances will leave from the cell back into the capillary that will be transported in the blood vessels and will eventually be excreted from the body okay now additionally i wanted to note that substances also leave from the cells into the lymph vessel all right and it's collected by the lymph so notice the lymph will be the fluid in the lymph vessel around the cells you have what you call a tissue fluid so substance diffuse from the blood into the tissue fluid and then from the cells into the tissue fluid and then into the lymph vessel do you remember what i said earlier that the tissue fluid is maintaining that osmotic relationship between the blood and the what lymph so it is a connected fluid between both lymph vessel and the vessel and the blood vessels right so notice it's right in between and surrounds the cell so the tissue fluid is very important in maintaining what is happening or, re or removing or entering the cell very very important and if you know about osmosis what we do what we did before in a previous lesson it depends on the concentration of the tissue fluid uh, let's look at another version all right so the similar thing is happening here yes it may look a little bit more complicated but it's the same thing the artery connect to the blood capillary okay and then the blood capillary leads to the vein same thing and then around the cells you will have your tissue fluid 
And a point to note, notice the blood capillary surround cell because the capillaries are what the capillaries are the structures that exchange substances from the blood to the cells. So the so capillaries will surround cells and tissues. So the tissue fluid that surrounds the cells will receive the substances that diffuse from the capillary and then they will pass into the cells. The cells will use these substances again and they diffuse out and eventually go back into the capillary then go back to the what? Vein. Substances also leave the cells and go into the lymph vessels. All right? And the lymph will be there which is this colorless um, fluid. All right, that's carried taken out waste and will contain some form of what? White blood cells, which are known as lymphocytes. All right, this is the last version I'm look at right here now, folks. It's the same thing, but there's one additional thing on this one, which I'm going to explain. And so, this one, so what, this matter of fact, this will be a more realistic one, I will say, because this is kind of um, showing you the whole dynamics of what is happening. But all three, they are perfectly explained in the lymphatic system, and you can use any, and you may see any comes up um, in exam. All right? So in this one, notice the artery, and blood is flowing from the artery, because blood leaves artery towards um, cells or towards organs. And so it leaves in the artery, get into the capillary so this side will be the capillary where substances are diffusing in and out of the blood okay so substance diffuse out of the blood that the cells need and back into the blood by the capillary and then go towards the vein all right and notice from all of this i only highlight red blood cells the reason why i highlight red blood cells is because the red blood cells are what transporting the substances okay um towards the cells are what the cells need Alright, so the, the red blood cells are very important in transporting these substances. Now again, substances like waste will leave from the cells into the lymph vessel, which contains lymph. Alright, and around the cells we have our, our tissue fluid. Now coming from the lymph, we end up going into what they call a lymph node. So this is the only thing I need to explain right here now, folks, is that the lymph node, which is very important to filter and drain the lymph so it is filtering the lymph very important filtering it taking out the substance that that the, that should not be inside of the lymph it also responsible to take out cancer cells all right it is very important for us to note please note this part the li the lymph node it is the site or you can say the major site for lymphocytes so you have a lot of lymphocytes right here a lot of white blood cells okay inside of the lymph node so it's responsible you know to produce antibodies that will destroy bacteria and viruses and so on when once the lymph is being filtered it may go back towards the blood vessel the reason for that because the blood vessel will also need white blood cells just in case you have an infection or any foreign object that should be taken out of the blood the lymphocytes can help in destroying those and also the waste product and substance that need to go back for excretion can also enter the blood and exit the body okay now folks now you see the different version of the lymphatic system we're at the end of the lesson and please keep watching to learn much more just simply subscribe see you in the next lesson